Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems. My favorite theorem, right? Right, very biased point of view. Um, today I would like to tell you something about so the so-called Knesers conjecture, which is actually a theorem. So it, you can't call it Knesers theorem because Knesers didn't prove it, um, but it is honest theorem. So today it's really about an honest theorem. And it's actually kind of a funny theorem in, in graph theory or theory of finite sets, but that's not really the point. The point will be kind of the proof because the proof, or at least the first proof of the theorem used a classical um, result from topology, which is a bit surprising because as you will see, uh, Knezia's conjecture is, is a purely finite set theoretical conjecture or a graph coloring conjecture if you want. So something very discrete. And well, then, it's not quite clear why anything from topology should help to prove such a theorem. But actually it's part of, and was maybe one of the first instances of what is nowadays known as um, topological combinatorics. So in a lot of cases, you can actually use topological arguments and combinatorics, which I find very surprising. And this is maybe the first instance, as I said, of it, and um, probably the most well-known. So maybe let's just jump right into it and always keep in mind that the point will be not the formulation of the conjecture, which is also not bad, of course. So it's a nice combinatorial conjecture, but, but more that it opens um, kind of directions for more investigations about how things from discrete, to discrete mathematics and topology are related. Anyway, so here is um, a Gnesa graph. A Knesia graph has two inputs. So in my notation, this n here and this k here. And n is just my pre-chosen set. So I choose my set one to n. Very good. And the k is saying that I take k element subsets of this set. Okay, that's what I take. I have a set one to n, uh, in this case, one to five. So, um, and I take K element subsets. So what is my notation? So I want to think of one to five as being arranged on a circle. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I just, whatever, I just uh, encircle those or color those red if I like to choose those. So for example, this one here is just the set uh, two, five, right? Two, five. Um, maybe another example of this one here below is the set three, five. Make some sense? So not too bad, right? Just finite sets and I take, the, the second index tells me I take two elements from my finite set one to five or one to eight. And I draw an edge between them if they don't intersect. So let's have a look at those two, for example. Uh, as you can see, it's very easy to see in this, in this um, notation because you just have to check whether, let's say, uh, those two reds are also filled in here, but they're not. So you draw an edge between them. And you continue to do this for all uh, K element subsets that you find, and you get a graph, and that's called the Knesia graph. In this case, um, K25 is illustrated here. And this will be my running example. Um, just to, well, get us all on the same page. So KN1, so I choose one element subsets from one to n. Well, they are always disjoint, right? So this is just a complete graph on n vertices, for example. Um, on the other extreme, if k is too big, so or n is too small, whatever, um, then by the pigeonhole principle, basically, there won't be any edges, right? So in this case, if k would be, let's say k would be three here, uh, could be absolutely true, right? And I would like to choose two different three element subsets. Well, without um, without lots of generality, I can let my first one be one to three. And then I try to choose a disjoint one and I run into troubles because I don't have enough elements, right? So as soon as K is too big, the graph will be very boring. So I'm going to ignore that case throughout the whole talk. Okay, but seems to be, uh, pretty good setup. It's it's just a graph theoretical version of something in, in, um, in the theory of finite sets, namely how finite sets intersect, right? 
That's what it's all about. And Kneda then was interested in coloring those graphs. What is the coloring of a graph? Well, you assign a color. In my case, I have white, let's say, which I do yellow. I have blue and I have green. And you assign those colors and you're not, you, you can vary the number of colors. You just have to find uh, something that works to each vertex such that two neighboring vertices never share the same color. Right, so this blue vertex can't be neighbor to another blue vertex, and indeed it isn't. Um, this white vertex here can't be neighbor to another white vertex, and indeed it isn't. It's not necessary to be neighbor to any of the other colors. You're just not allowed to neighbor your own color, right? So this white vertex cannot be neighboring this one, this one, or this one, and indeed it is not. And that's the coloring. Um, there is an obvious uh, coloring that you can use for let's, so this graph has 10 vertices. So if you would use 10 colors, then you're good because you just each, each vertex gets its own color. That's, that's kind of easy. And the problem we usually look at in graph theory would be to uh, find the minimal possible coloring. So this is this number chi. So in this case, I claim the minimal possible coloring is three. So chi five two is actually three. Why is it three? Well, I just show, so here I show you one that is three. So the only thing I need to check is that there is no one with two. Well, that's also pretty easy if I color this blue. And let's say my second color is, is this white, which is yellow. This is white. And then this has to be yellow again, uh, blue again. This has to be yellow. This has to be blue and I'm in trouble. So I can't find a, a two coloring of this graph. And the problem Knesa was asking is, well, what is the smallest number? In other words, what is the smallest number such that you can, you can partition um, your, your K element subsets into chi uh, sets of intersecting families of K sets? That's just the finite set theoretical version of the same, of the same question. So in Knesa conjecture that this number is d plus one, uh, d plus two in the following setup when n, so I, I, I said n is big enough. So n is certainly bigger than 2k and just whatever, whatever the amount it is bigger than d. And Knesa said, okay, it's, it's the, this minimal coloring is d plus one. So in this case, five is um, two times two plus one. So D, so D is one, this is D. So D plus two is of course three. So in this case, Knedas conjecture holds. Um, would be a little bit uh, surprising if it wouldn't hold for such a small example. And the point is to prove it in general. Um, and this was his Aufgabe 360, so exercise number 360. Um, it's a bit dif more difficult than an exercise, we will see. Okay, so let me explain probably why Knesa um, conjectured this d plus two. Um, so I'm not sure, of course, I haven't checked, uh, but there is an easy way to construct the d plus two coloring. In other words, this number is certainly lower than d plus two. So it's an easy way to construct this coloring. So I will explain now how, how this coloring is constructed. Um, and then it remains to show that we can't do better which was my, my, in this case, this argument was easy that you can't do better, but in general, that's pretty tricky. So you would guess you can use something like induction, but induction doesn't really work and ooh, it's a bit tricky. But anyway, one direction, namely that uh, there exists a D plus two coloring is, is pretty easy. So here is my convention again. So I start one, two, three, four, five. Very good. And I produce now a D plus two coloring for you as follows. So I take a VI, so my, 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 remember that I wanted to have this disjoint union of sets. And I just take VI to be the, from, um, the set which contains I as a minimal element. And that's from I, for, for I from one to D plus one. So in this case, V1 is white and V2 is blue. So let's see all white ones should have 
this element here because this is a minimal element one, one and indeed they have and none of the others should have those this element correct works pretty well um here is a minimal element maybe i shouldn't use uh here the minimal element should be two so all blue subsets should have this one marked and yes and green does not have this one marked so um that's how you construct everything up to d plus one and then you just say okay combine all the rest right so green is the rest as you can see and yes this produces a coloring why does this produce a coloring well <laughs> by construction um, each element in VI uh, intersects because they have the same minimal element. And by, again, the pigeonhole principle, you can also show that uh, all the elements from VD plus two intersect as well. And remember that we built our graph by putting edges whenever sets intersect. So this produces, definitely produces the coloring. And because this is so easy, and maybe because um, Knezer then tried to, to, to do better and failed. Uh, Knezer conjectured that this is the best or this is really the best you can do. And the theorem, well, the main theorem of today is, um, yeah, it actually works. Knezer's conjecture holds. Um, okay, funny, funny conjecture, funny theorem, why not? The point is the first proof really needed 23 years because it's really not obvious it, it's one of those um in a lot of times you can just formulate a conjecture in combinatorics and it's just obvious that it's true because you can check it up to 1 million or whatever but it's just ridiculously hard to prove this was one of those instances and um maybe this whole talk wouldn't be or this whole video wouldn't exist if that would be it um, because just well, let's say a combinatorial proof of a combinatorial statement might not be super exciting, right? Who knows? But here comes the point. The point is this proof, this can be proven using uh, topology, using the following version of the Borsche-Ulam theorem, the Borsche-Ulam theorem, um, the following one. So if it takes a D plus one sphere and you can cover it by D plus two sets, such that you have a bunch of open sets and you have a bunch of close uh, and you have one set in, 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 in which can be anything, but um, in the formulation of the proof or in the when you use it for the proof of the Knezer conjecture, this will be closed. That's why I denoted C. But anyway, you have those D plus one uh, open sets, UI, and well, in another one, and they cover the D sphere then at least one of them contains an antipodal point. Okay, so here's my example S1. S1 is of course just a circle and I cover it by two sets, right? So in this case, uh, D is one. So here D is one. So D plus one is of course two and I cover it by two sets and they should be open in, in a reasonable sense. So something like this, for example. And no matter what you do, you will always find, so here, um, the, the blue set goes all the way down to here. And in this case, the red set goes all the way down up to here and you will find this pair of antipodal points. And the point is, no matter what you do, you will always find this pair of antipodal points. In this case, I find it in both of them, in both of my sets. In general, you will only find it in one of them. Okay. You can already imagine that this picture is exactly the same, but now my blue set goes very, very far and the red set is very, very small, then uh, the antipodal pair will be contained in the blue set some way. Right, so very nice uh, theorem and topology. And yes, you can use it to prove um, that it's at least D plus two, right? So um, here we had the opposite, and now we have this direction, and it works as follows. So here is my sphere, okay? And what you do is you take the, the, the points, the 2K plus D points, and you just put them kind of in general position, which means they shouldn't stupidly overlap or something like that. You just put them on the D sphere, okay? And then you assume that you have this, this decomposition 
v1 up to vd plus one. And you want to basically show that there are two sets A and B, which are um, which don't intersect. In particular, they need another color because they will be connected by an edge. So A and B will be connected by an edge in my graph. And the way you do is, is you define those open sets and then you get a covering in exactly this, this, this way here. So those are, will be the open sets and C will be the complement of those open sets. As I said, it will be then closed, but for this theorem, it actually doesn't matter. So you have those open sets and you have the complement and the open sets are very easy defined. It, it's, it's a brilliant idea. Um, there's the all points on the sphere, so the open sets, all points on the sphere, such as the hemisphere, which the pole on that point contains uh, a K set from VI. Right? So that's what you do. And then the, basically this version of the borsche kulam theorem tells you that some of those open sets contain those an anti pair of antipodal points. Um, this needs one extra argument. You need to rule out that C contains an antipodal point, but that's not so hard to see. Then exactly this theorem tells you that some of those guys need to contain uh, an antipodal point. And then you're in this situation, and because you, you build hemispheres, then you can then you, it's easy to see by definition, basically, that you found two, dis, uh, two disjoint sets which have to be connected by an edge, which means you need at least one more color. Nice, right? Um, so if this was a little bit too fast, the proof isn't, isn't really long. It, I found it and it appears in the nice book, Proofs from the Book, which is linked in the description. And yeah, it, it's, it's really, really short and it's, it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, it uses topology to prove a conjecture in um, a, a conjecture was, which was open for a very, very long time in the theory of finite sets or graph colorings, whatever you want. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.